Our guest this evening is friend of the show, Claire Dwyer. She is the editor of the website spiritualdirection.com. Her work is also featured on various Catholic sites, including catholicmom.com, endowgroups.org, and the National Catholic Register, and on her own blog, eventhesparrow.com. She speaks frequently on the topics of saints, spirituality, respect for life, and the mission and vocation of women in the church today. She holds a degree in theology from Franciscan University and spiritual theology from the Avila Institute. She joins us tonight to tell us how to find a spiritual director in 10 easy steps. Welcome back to the Busted Ale Show, Claire Dwyer. Oh, if only it was that easy. Yeah, right? that easy. Thanks yeah. for having me to talk about something that everybody seems to want to know these days. I have a they question do. for you. How often do people ask you, will you be my spiritual director? Not as often because I'm not in a parish setting, but here on the radio, I will say, Claire, that anytime we bring up the topic, almost inevitably people will ask, how do I find one? How do I get one? And whatnot. You know, Claire, what I should add to your uh, intro that I say the next time you're on, uh, I've been saying all night, parentheses, no relation. This is not nepotism, having Claire on. Although now, is, is, gonna, Dwyer, is Dwyer your married name? I forget. It's my married name. But when okay. I was on last, you had a plan. You were going to go to Ireland and like reclaim the land. I was oh, yeah. like, next door. What happened? Well, uh, Brett, pandemic. Happened that? <laughs> well, a pandemic. You went happened. to Arizona instead. Yeah, well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> but Brett, don't you have some land in Ireland? I do. <laughs> um, it's five square feet, but that still counts. <laughs> I still have a document that says Lord Brett Siddell. Lord Brett Siddell. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I have to reclaim that. I don't even know what that would be. Put a chair there. I don't. I can't. Do, <laughs> I can't do a lot in that space. But technically, yes. So Claire, again, I congratulate you on uh, as we did last time the website spiritualdirection.com because I mean, a it's a great website. People can remember it easily. There's already a link on our radio blog that people remember easily. Bustedhalo.com/radio. But people do ask frequently. You know, what is a spiritual director? Should I get one? I mean, your 10 steps are good, but I think maybe even let's start with if people have no idea when we say that and maybe they're picturing, is it like going to therapy? Is it more like when I go to confession? When we say spiritual direction, what are we talking about here, Claire? Yeah, it's a good question. And I will say too, I'll backtrack for a minute. When I was on last time, you said something I'll never forget. You were like, congratulations on that URL. <laughs> and it's so true because everybody's searching for it. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's just incredible. And this article that I wrote about finding one was one of our top articles all year. Um, spiritual direction is a relationship between a director and a directee that is focused mm -hmm. on the directee and the work of God in their life. In fact, we like to say that the spiritual director is actually the Holy Spirit and so the primary relationship is actually between God and the directee, not between the two people. But yeah. the director's job is to help them listen to what the Holy Spirit and what the Lord is saying in their life, keep them accountable to some spiritual practices. And we often get the question, does everybody need a spiritual director? Right. And my answer to that is, uh, if you are just beginning your spiritual journey, and if you're trying to establish some basic practices of prayer and sacramental life, you probably don't need a spiritual director yet. You probably need a mentor or some friendships that are going to keep you on the path. But eventually, if you continue in the journey of holiness that we're all called to, it's a super helpful um, practice to have. Well, we're speaking with Claire Dwyer from the uh, website spiritualdirection.com. And as you said, one of your most uh, read articles there is 10 steps to find a spiritual director. So if somebody's in that place where they say, this sounds good to me, don't know where I would do that. Um, what you, you what you start with is probably the most important step one is to pray and to ask God, uh, please, you know, lead me in the right direction to find a spiritual director. And I like that in one of your steps, and I'll let you do most of them, but I, I like in one of them, you sit, you talk about asking your priest, but with the caveat that it may or may not end up being him. I know, in fact, uh, I know of several priests who have kind of their own policy that they will engage in sort of pastoral counseling if somebody's got an issue coming up in their life. But if they're the pastor of a whole parish, sometimes they don't see it as their role to be in that, that sort of one-on-one -on -one spiritual direction relationship with 
any of their parishioners because they want to serve the entire uh, parish. So I know some priests that won't be a regular spiritual director. Now, that's obviously, there's no law against that, so many of them do. But because many of them do, because many priests are overworked and busy, um, it, he may not have, have time to do that if he's your pastor. So I like that you start with those two, pray about it first, um, ask your pastor for some direction, but then where do we go after that? Yeah, so... Uh, if your pastor has any leads, then that's the first place to kind of follow up with. And like you said, don't be afraid to ask for some limited encouragement or direction for a few weeks or while I'm making a decision. Um, it's a little less intimidating for him to say yes to something that right. you know, has an endpoint. Um, look for recommendations of people that you know and trust. Start close to home and start branching out from there. I also can uh, ask people to consider being very creative and think outside the box a little bit. Like not all priests are pastors. Some of them might be, you know, at a Newman Center, a chaplain of a hospital, a retired priest. These priests might have more time, but don't necessarily limit yourself to priests. Now there's varying opinions about this. And some people feel very strongly that clergy are the only ones qualified to give spiritual direction, but there are a growing number of schools and places in the church that are forming lay people to give spiritual direction. In fact, I'm in formation for that myself. And, and so- And I would say, just, just to follow up on that, Claire, if people are kind of ooh, concerned about that, you're right that there are many people who feel that way, but that's not the church's teaching. The church does right. not limit spiritual direction to clergy. That's correct. Um, and Pope Francis himself has actually encouraged people to look for lay spiritual directors because there is what we would call a charism for that. I wouldn't say every lay person, no matter how devout they are, would be necessarily a good spiritual director. Um, and and I'll, I'll let me be the one to say this. That is also true of every priest. Not every priest is, is gifted in spiritual direction. That's right. Or even trained um, in spiritual direction. Although they certainly, by virtue of their priesthood and the office of the priesthood, they have a special grace, especially for those, you know, perhaps in their parish or their um jurisdiction, but certainly don't disregard the laity. Um, there are certain schools of spiritual direction that you could contact, and we list some of them in the article, um, which maybe, I don't know if you could link it maybe at, um, with the interview, but... Sure. No, Christina will do that. Bustedhalo.com slash radio. Perfect. Um, if you go, to, if you would contact the schools, they will have graduates of their schools in perhaps even in your area that they could connect you to. And certain schools have certain spiritualities. So you might find yourself, for example, looking for an Ignatian director. And so the Lanteri Center, for example, in Denver um, could be a great starting point for you. Um, so so let, let's, let's uh, tease out a little bit of that in that um, spiritual direction can happen in many different ways. Although people, as you're pointing out, are trained to do it well. And the broadest experience or the broadest definition would be what you started with. Really, it is God directing the heart of somebody and somebody who's maybe trained to listen a little better to certain things might be able to point somebody in a direction not too dissimilar to Claire, um, our own, I know you're in, you're in training, our own Brett Sedell right now at Louisiana State University is getting a master's in social work and one of the things that when one is training correct me if I'm wrong, Brett, to be like a counselor or a therapist one of the things they train you to is not just to be smart and give people a lot of answers is just train on how to listen for stuff right oh, for certain yeah 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 and so similar in spiritual direction that you know as you said claire well hopefully a priest can listen well sure and hopefully you know your good friend can listen but ways in which with with spiritual direction where the training is to listen for particular things and help guide the person on on their uh, on their journey. And yet you also now started to fill in a, a few more specifics that because we have a lot of spiritual traditions in the church, there might be one or one or more that would work for any individual better than something else. So if somebody happens to have a, a great attraction, as you said, to whatever Ignatian spirituality is, maybe they don't know what that is, but somebody might introduce them to that and say, yeah, this sounds like this would work for me. So how how would they kind of tease that out? If somebody listening right now, Claire, is saying, well, I don't know the difference between like a Franciscan spiritual director and a nation. How do I know where to look? Well, I would say not to worry about that too much. If that's not something that you're worried about, it's not something that you have to pursue. And just to find a good person that you feel like is trustworthy, that's um, far enough ahead in their own journey that they can guide and lead you, then that's probably all you need to know. 
Um, but if you are familiar with a certain saint or you for, feel particularly drawn to a certain religious tradition in the church, if you have a special affinity for St. Francis and all things Franciscan, then maybe, you know, is there a Franciscan order, especially in your diocese, whether it's active or contemplative, or, you know, Carmelite, Ignatian, there's a richness. I'm in the uh, Benedictine, in a Benedictine spiritual direction program. And so they have a certain flavor and I really have come to appreciate that. I also love the Carmelites. I mean, there's just this variety in the church and when you find what's right, it just feels like coming home. And that's something really beautiful. Um, but that goes back to prayer too. Ask the Lord, like, what do you have for me? And just trust that he will guide you and lead you. If you're um, receptive to his movements, then he'll find the perfect fit for you eventually. We are speaking with Claire Dwyer. She is the editor of the website spiritualdirection.com, and we're talking about her 10 steps to find a spiritual director and also probably, not even probably, I'm, I'm confident that spiritualdirection.com would also help you answer some questions if you really are very new at this and don't know if it's something that you need or want. Claire, would you find that some people would at different times in their life and their spiritual journey might have a need for spiritual direction more so than others. Like you, you mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, if you're really just getting going and prayer is new to you, maybe not. Uh, certainly, um, I, I would think it would be perhaps apparent to people that when somebody is, is exploring something as serious as a vocation to priesthood or religious life, almost always the first thing that people will say is, okay, well, this is good that you're exploring this question and maybe testing out some different communities that you might join, but also you definitely should be in spiritual direction. What are some other times that you find that people might be common times or occasions or uh, events in their life that might be good or fruitful for spiritual direction? Well, I think anytime you're making a major decision, vocational, something that's going to impact your life and your family's life, it's really important to seek out advice. I mean, the wisdom of the saints is that sometimes even in just speaking to somebody, the, the very act of talking about something is clarifying. And so when you're making any kind of decision or you're about to, um, you know, make a, a, a life event kind of uh, choice, those things are really important to bring to the wisdom of another person. I also think when prayer begins to change for you, when prayer becomes to maybe be difficult or dry, you're not quite sure you're doing it right. It, it's, it, um, maybe there's a certain aridity, what we call like a dryness in prayer and it stops feeling as fruitful as it used to be in the beginning. That's an indication that you're moving spiritually and it's really important that uh, you seek out some spiritual direction at that point in your life. And there is a temptation to actually give up some of the great practices that we began when we were all on fire for our faith. Um, and instead of doing that, it would be really important to seek out somebody to walk with you in the next stage of your journey. Mm -hmm. Claire Dwyer joins us talking about spiritual direction and how we might find one. Again, if somebody's listening and they, they still don't quite know, maybe they've never even been to like a therapist or something. I, go, I don't know what happens in those sort of sessions. C can you, we, maybe could you give us an example if I was coming to you, and maybe you actually do this in some of your classes, but if I was coming to you for spiritual direction and we sit down and we're chatting for a bit, what might be either kind of a starter question or what might be some way in which a spiritual director, can you give an example of what, uh, what a spiritual director might say? <laughs> well, it's probably um, not as complicated as you might think. It's usually we begin with prayer. How are you? And then what's God been doing in your life? And sometimes it's, it pours right out from the beginning. And sometimes we talk about a lot of things and dance around it and eventually you know, what God is doing in the person's prayer life comes out. Um, I often, in my own experience of giving and receiving spiritual direction, begin with scripture and the practice of reading scripture and what God is saying to you through the daily readings or through the, the book that you're, of scripture that you're kind of in at the moment, tends to draw out bigger life lessons and, um, you know, opportunities to discuss some of those discernment points that come up. I mean, this is the wisdom of something like St. Ignatius, who was the master of spiritual direction. It's really, it begins and ends with scripture and the gospel and the Lord speaking to us through the living word um, that is not something that was just written in the past, but is, for, is written for us in the present. 
Um, <laughs> uh, Christina, note to self, next time we make St. Ignatius the uh, answer on a quiz, I am the guru of spiritual direction would be a thing that saint might say. That would probably be easier. And now, Claire, did you know this? This We had this as a quiz, and somebody got this, and we were blown away. Did you know that St. Ignatius was the patron saint of the military diocese of the Philippines? <laughs> no, no, it's not common knowledge. <laughs> I know he wanted to go on crusade. Is that why? I don't know. Well, he was a soldier. Random so that... Saint, Saint facts you never wish you right. knew. <laughs> well, we're talking with Claire Dwyer from spiritualdirection.com. Ten steps to finding a spiritual director. So we've talked about ask God in prayer. Ask your pastor. Look for a re recommendation from someone you know and trust. Be creative. Maybe think about some places you haven't thought of. Don't disregard the lady because they are well-trained, and Claire will be one of those soon. Uh, and then inquiring at schools of spiritual direction. You can, there's several suggestions in her article that we've linked to. Now, uh, and then the last few are, well, what if this isn't, what if I'm not finding somebody right away? or what if my diocese doesn't have a lot or my pastor doesn't have time? You've got some alternatives. What are some of those? Yeah, I'll just say too, I think that if you're struggling to find a spiritual director, you're not alone. Again, don't give up. But there is a growing movement in the church to form spiritual directors because there is kind of a lack. So don't lose heart. It will happen in God's own time. But in the meantime, there are some things you can do. For example, spiritual mentors which I recommend, these are not people necessarily trained in spiritual direction. They would never call themselves or consider themselves a director, but they are people that are ahead of you, perhaps on the journey a little bit. Somebody you look up to and admire who's been doing this walk with Christ for a long time, and they have it together to some degree that maybe you admire. And so, you know, have a relationship with them. Ask them to mentor you in your journey, whether that's meeting once in a while to pray and talk or, um, you know, joining. Also, I mentioned like joining groups, spiritual friendships are so important. Join that Bible study at church, that mom's group of women that are also trying to live like a balanced life of prayer and family and it, do that in the meantime. And also keep reading, studying, growing. There is no shortage of wonderful resources in the church today, catechetical and evangelistic, evangelistic that um, can lead you in your own walk in holiness in the meantime, if you, even if you can't meet one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I'll shameless plug spiritualdirection.com every day where it's in, in material that's specifically designed for those that are seeking to grow in the spiritual life. Um, whether or not you have a director, it's kind of a bottomless well. I mean, it's been 10 years of posts on that website long before I was there. I'm like constantly digging stuff out of that website. It's just <laughs> <That's good>. gold. <laughs> and I've actually been republishing it because I'm like, this is brilliant. There you um, go. So anyway, out there. <laughs> come and see us over at spiritualdirection.com too. Well, Claire, I was at my, oh, I said at, I saw my spiritual director today. We do now do this. We do the Zoom, the uh, virtual which has allowed me, actually allowed me to reconnect with a spiritual director that I had many years ago who does not live near where I live, and we wouldn't be able to do it if it was in person, or it certainly wouldn't be very often. And uh, and it's been good to reconnect, really, over the last uh, six or eight months, and, and some some new, paving new ground in the spiritual direction. You mean That's you don't point. ever not need it? That's another nope. question. Like, when am I ever done? Yeah, Claire, <laughs> I would probably need it way more frequently than she would have time to meet with me. <laughs> and so in my example to what you're saying before my example is a, is a religious sister and she did work with our seminary community but way back in the day when i was in washington dc and i had seen her as a spiritual director then and uh, and she's she's good I, I would also say something you, you didn't uh, touch on is that certainly from my own experience those of us who are extroverts, i.e. not that we like parties, but that we process all this outside of our bodies, meaning it's in a journal or it's coming out of my mouth on a microphone, um, I would say benefit from spiritual direction greatly because, like, other than, we talk about this a lot, Claire, on the show, Christina, who is an introvert, it's Christina, for you, it all just happens inside, and then at some point, you might let somebody know. For me, it has to come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, so different. But you go, to, you enjoy spiritual direction as well. So it's not just for extroverts. Yeah, I love spiritual direction. I think I just process things internally and then I bring them to my spiritual director. <laughs> Whereas I feel like sometimes where my siblings who are extroverted, 
they process things as they're talking. Oh, for sure. They may not have even realized they right. felt that way until right. they said it. Oh, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. the case with me. Oh, for sure. Right. So, yeah. so for me, like she started today, my spiritual director started with, well, what, you know, have you thought, is there any agenda that you have? And I had two things that I wanted to talk about, but I had not resolved what these things are. And I, I knew there would be something good. <laughs> I will learn something about myself if I bring these two things up. And that was the case. But Christina, for you, you're like, okay, I've got, here's what I'm going to tell him. I've got it all figured out. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes we go in a different direction. But regardless of whether you're introverted or extroverted, it's extremely beneficial because you still, at the end of the day, are looking for guidance. Yeah. And that's what your spiritual director is there for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Claire, thank you so much for sharing some of these uh, tips with us from spiritualdirection.com. Thanks for having me. And now, uh, how far along are you? Like, when will you be officially, when will you hang the shingle? At the rate I'm going, it'll be about 10 years. <laughs> you gotta remember, I'm, I got six kids, father, right. I'm working right. full time, I'm yes. writing a second book, and I'm oh doing this. I'm a little okay. nut. Well, um, no, not quite that long, but it'll be a few years. Yeah. Have the kids write the book. That'll take that off. <laughs> <laughs> that'll keep them busy, A, eh? yep, and then yep. you got a book out of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Publisher will love that. <laughs> Claire well, Dwyer and family will be easy the... to remember spiritualdirection.com but just in case we'll put a link on our radio blog bustedhalo.com slash radio and we'll link right to these 10 steps and they do have some more resources so a lot of things that we talked about quickly Claire's got a lot of links there that will help you uh, delve into some more Claire Dwyer thank you so much thank you so much for having me we'll be back with lots more busted halo show in just a minute so keep it on the catholic channel Sirius XM 129